Hello, ECE240, and welcome to week seven. Here we are getting closer to our midterm, um, chapter six, cognitive development approaches. Um, before we get into um, the main focus of this week, I want to start with, please keep on trying APA. Remember that you must use APA on your midterm. And then on your discussions and your observations um, after your midterm. So you must use APA for your midterm and then for your discussions and observations um, after the midterm. So very important for you to keep on trying using APA and really perfect and master um, that skill. The kind of term of the week is cognitive development. Um, the term of cognitive development refers to the process of growth and change in intellectual mental abilities such as thinking, reasoning, and understanding. Uh, it includes the acquisition of knowledge. And so the important piece that I want to give you here is that this all feeds into the importance of 80-90. Last week, we talked about the importance of brain development, and this really gets into then allowing to maximize the use of our brain via cognitive development and how we develop cognitively. We're going to get a little bit later into Piaget and Vygotsky, but I want to take a little more time of defining um, cognitive um, development for you really quick, okay? So what I want to do here is first start with why is cognitive development so important for a child? Well, as we know, 80-90, that from birth through age five, a child develops many neural pathways, right? And we want to do the work of connecting as many neural pathways, connections as possible. And in fact, during this stage, the child's brain develops more than any time of its life, right? So we know this is the definition of 80-90. 80% of critical brain development happening by age three and 90% happening by age five. For that reason, focusing on helping those neural connections, the neural connection develop, it's vital, right? This is our window of opportunity. Once again, why is cognitive development so important? Cognitive development provides children with the means of being able to pay attention to think about the world around them, right? And it's these everyday experiences and how we put experiences in front of them that allow them to develop cognitively. So, Professor Ortiz, you're using this word cognitive. What, what is the definition of that? So, what is cognition? Cognition refers to the range of mental processes relating to the acquisition, taking in information, storing it, manipulating, and the retrieval of information. Once again, it is the mental process relating to the acquisition, storage, manipulation, and retrieval of information. Next week, I want you to make this comparison because next week we're going to talk about the term executive function skills. And within executive function skills, under that umbrella is called working memory. And working memory really is this ability to absorb something, hold on to it, but then able to use it, the retrieval of information, use it, manipulate it. Right? So this is really important 
to the development of our children and how we support their cognitive development really is about the relationship we have with them and how intentional we are in supporting the different choices and environment that we put in front of them to be able to absorb, to pay attention, to stay focused, right? To be able to store that information, manipulate it, and then be able to retrieve that information during daily activities, right? So this is really critical, very, very important, okay? Like I said, very, very important that you have a good grasp of this because next week we're going to enhance on how we process information and we're going to learn about executive function skills where this fits under the umbrella of executive function skills. Okay? So this week, our book does a really good job of bringing up two theorists. And so now I'm going to get back to the slide that I want to share with you really quick. Let me pull that up now. All right. And in this slide, we're going to go deeper into Piaget and Vygotsky. And remember that our kind of first week, first two weeks of our class, we went deep into the different theories of child development. And these two theorists and their theories were part of that week. And now we're gonna get deeper into their work because it's these two individuals that our public education system of how we teach is really inspired by and we use these two theories to support how we educate our children here in the United States. And so this week, you're going to take some extra time to focus on these two theorists. Piaget concluded that development happened in distinct stages. So you really want to focus on those distinct stages. And that each must be reached in order. Okay. So you can't get to number two unless you get to number one first. One, then two, then three. But Vygotsky did not accept that development happened in these distinct stages. Piaget concluded that development leads to learning. Vygotsky held that social learning precedes development. Vygotsky was really key on this ability of the social impact, our environment, our nurture in regards to our development, okay? So in your book, I really want you to focus on A, having a true understanding of what is cognitive development. Number two, really getting deeper around these two theorists of Piaget and Vygotsky. Now, what I want to do is show that your book does a really good job. I'm actually going to bring up your book really quick. And these are areas I want you to focus in your reading, taking notes, because you will see this on your midterm. So let's get into our book really quick now. Your book does a really nice job of getting into Piaget's theory, but yet also showing how this theory is applied in our education system, okay? So I want you to take a really nice look at this page where it says Piaget in education. Focus on these top five right here and how we then implement Piaget in the classroom and also the contributions of um, his theory in the education system. And of course, there is some criticism um, around it, but I really want you to focus on this part of Piaget 
and education. And then it also does a really nice job of looking at Vygotsky's theory, okay? And so what you'll see as you get deeper into Vygotsky, as you learn about his theory, it talks about then how his theory is used within teaching strategies, okay? So we're talking about the ZPD. What is the ZPD, okay? Zone of Proximal Development. I really want you to have a strong understanding of what ZPD is. You will see that on your midterm. I also want you to have a really strong understanding around how ZPD really transforms the classroom and how it changes the role of an educator, okay? And then once again, it does a really nice job of looking at Vygotsky and Piaget, seeing where they're similar and seeing where they're different. But it really is these two individuals that have made a strong impact of how we teach our children. And it's all connected to cognitive development, okay? Um, for your support this week, um, let's go to modules really quick. I have some really great videos that can enhance your understanding and learning when it comes to these two theorists, okay? So what you're gonna see is you will see this great video on the importance of cognitive development. Please take the time to watch this video. It's only three minutes long, okay? So please, it's a great video. It does a really good job of giving you another perspective, another format of learning by watching this video to support your understanding of cognitive development. Then I have this video uh, that gets into um, Piaget and Vygotsky, okay? Only a five minute video. And it gets a little bit more deeper into adolescent development, which is a really nice um, opportunity to get deeper in that area. Um, the next videos that I have for you are the similarities and differences between Piaget and Vygotsky. This is really gonna help you on your midterm, all these videos well, and also on your discussion for this week. And this is really cool. This is a, a college student who put a final together on um, Vygotsky and Piaget, okay? So I want you to take the time to watch those videos and understand through all of this, when we're talking about cognitive development, how we enhance and support it is through our relationship with a child and B, how intentional we are being to support their ability to, once again, paying attention, thinking about the world around them, using this information and not just being able to hold it, but use it and manipulate it, right? This is the beauty of learning. We have to understand before we can use it. And that is really what cognitive development is about. Absorb it, understand it, and then be able to use it. This week really sets up the foundation around what we'll be seeing for next week. And next week, we're gonna get deep into the term of executive function skills. And next week, you're gonna have the opportunity to be a Harvard student. Next week, everything we're going to use is going to come straight from Harvard University. And also, the handouts that I'm gonna give you will give you tools and strategies and games that you can play with children at different ages that are age appropriate that support executive function skills, that ultimately support 
cognitive development. So we're building ourselves to have a good understanding before we can actually implement these successful strategies to support children's cognitive development. So for this week, really quick, you have a question of the week. Your question of the week is this. Compare and contrast Piaget and Vygotsky's theories of cognitive development. And then I want you to think really quick. Should one or both be considered when planning lessons in school? And tell me why. Okay. This is a great opportunity to really flex your APA skills. Use an in-text citation and a full reference at the end. And of course, on Sunday, you have your quiz. Um, that is due this week. Uh, I want to say thank you for watching these videos. Um, and next week, once again, prepare yourself for a lot of fun and to have these tools to be able now to empower yourself to change the lives of others. That's what this whole class is about. We've talked about this. This class is built to allow you to reflect on your life, empower yourself, change your behaviors. And it's these tools that I'll give you next week that really set the opportunity of how you interact with others and change the way you interact with others and with children. I wish all of you a great week of learning, and I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.